Hello, fantastic creatures and fantasims, and today I'll show you how I created this Fantasy Baker Studio for Deligracy's Studio Cube Challenge. I'm currently working on my reaction video to your incredible shell challenge entries, but it's going to take me a while to get through them all, so here's a quick little video in the meantime. So I didn't do a speed build for this, so instead we will break it down together and then I'll reenact tutorial style how I constructed parts of it to hopefully inspire and give you guys ideas that you can replicate in your own builds. Deligracy's rules for the challenge were to create four of these eight square tile studios with a theme throughout all four and I chose fantasy professions and you can only add one room for the bathroom but you can add a loft style second floor so this is the first of four that I created and it's a fantasy baker's studio so I think the highlight features of this room in particular is I reconstructed the cupcake machine it's massive we all know that it like takes up six tiles and it's ridiculous so I figured if it's going to be ridiculous we might as well make it this big magical medieval style wooden covered cupcake machine and I love that I use these soul scraps from paranormal stuff pack and I didn't realize how much it would light up but I think it's cool because it adds a little magical touch and then probably the next one would be this little custom cabinet I created in the corner and I wanted to put these little mushrooms in because I just love the mushrooms from the new cottage living pack and I thought when you have a pantry area you can have these little dark areas to grow or to store vegetable like root vegetables that need to stay in the dark or whatever so let's break these down and I'll show you how I constructed them I've laid out the different stages here so you can see the progression of how in order to make a perfectly round arch you start off with a perfectly round circle now I've done a tutorial on how to do this before but I'll show you how to do it in this video too in order to get this perfect circle you're going to want an object like this post from toddler basically you want the footprint at the bottom and you're going to need that for the rotate around the center feature and I'm just going to rotate this one with tool mod by minus 90 degrees because the thick line is minus the thin line is positive and then I'm going to shift alt click to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate that one by 180 degrees so that we have one on the other side as well then you can choose pretty much any object that looks kind of stone looking I decided for this one to go with more of a light color and I used this package so I just resized it with the bracket key and then put one on either side at the same exact exact position we want to mirror image it then select one of them and rotate by minus 90 so that the underneath is facing on the inside and the top of the object is facing on the outside and then do the same to the other one but this time we're going to rotate it by 90 so we get a mirror image okay then for the fun part so you're going to have to select the post first you you have to click on these first because we're going to use the rotate around the center feature of tool mod and I'm just holding down the alt key and clicking on the rest of the objects good so you hold down the shift and the alt key and you click on it and it's now now duplicated this entire group then you're going to go over to rotate and we're going to rotate around the center change the axis so that it looks like this and we are going to I think I rotated these by 15 degrees each because that kind of created the perfect circle where it didn't overlap too much so we're going to rotate again by 15 and then shift alt click and then rotate again by 15 and you're just going to keep doing that until you get a perfect circle when you have your perfect circle it's on the ground and we're, we want to have it upright so with tool mod you're just going to click on that initial object and and then holding down the alt key click on all the other objects now that they're all selected I'm going to elevate it to give it enough room by like two and I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees like so and then it's upright exactly how we want it then in order to get to this stage that we see here I deleted all of the excess pieces such as these posts and then I deleted the other half of the circle that I didn't need and then you're left with this half arch as you see right here or half circle which is the arch I'm very good with my descriptive words <laughs> and then you just you're just going to click on hold alt key down again click on all of these objects and then you're going to hold down the shift and the alt key to duplicate and make sure the grid system is on and in order to give it that thicker look I just did three rows of this and to do that you'll pick the center line that you see right here and holding down the alt key click on the ground until you pull it out enough to make a another layer and then you just do it again shift alt click pull it out again to create that next layer then we're going to reselect all of these front pieces because I wanted to give it a kind of a thicker front to it and so you duplicate it and then this time we're going to rotate but we're going to get rid of the rotate around center change the axis so that it looks like this rotate all those individual pieces by 90 degrees and it gives it this front piece here but because it's kind of blended in I mean it looks pretty good like that but I actually pulled it forward just a little bit because it's blended in I wanted it to stand out just a little bit so you can pull it out like that maybe just a little bit more and then you can elevate it I can't remember how much I lowered it let's try minus point 
0.1, that might be too much. No, actually that's quite perfect. It needs to be pulled out just a little bit because of this right here. Awesome. And then just click on it to make sure it's not green anymore. Oop, this one rotated a funky way. Let's fix that up. So let's rotate by 180. See, it's I love when mistakes like this happen while I'm recording tutorial videos because then you guys can get a sense of what to do. Ooh, and it's pulled, I pulled it too far. So let's adjust that. Just holding down the Alt key, selecting them all again. It's good to show you my mistakes. I come across these mistakes all the time and this way I can show you how to remedy them. And I'm just pulling it back just a little bit so that we have no gap. Perfect. And then that's how I ended up with this. Now I decided for my build that I wanted it to be at an angle, but before we get there, notice how I have these sides right here. An easy peasy way to do that is to select the bottom pieces because these are at a nice straight 90 degree upright angle. We're going to select these and then duplicate them and then elevate. I don't know how much we'll need, maybe minus 0.3. See how much that does. Almost. Elevate minus 0.1. Perfect. And then do it again. Shift Alt click, elevate minus 0.4 and just keep doing that until you reach the bottom. Now for the final product, as you can see here, these kind of tilt inward slightly. I, I wanted to give it a slightly different shape than it just looking completely boxy like this. I mean, I think it looks pretty good like this, but if you want to add a bit of finesse to your arches, you can just hold down the Alt key. I'm selecting all of these pieces. And once they're selected, I want to slightly tilt them in a little bit. So let's rotate them and let's try 10 degrees and see what happens. Nice. You've got like this nice, subtle little tilt. And I'm actually going to pull these back a little bit by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the grid system a little bit more. Nice. And then you've got this slightly tilted inwards, which can look quite nice. But for the room I created, I wanted mine to be at an angle. So in order to do that, you can individually click on every object, but that's going to take a very long time. So instead, what you can do is hold down the shift key, click on a corner, hold down the shift key again, click on the opposite corner. Now this isn't quite big enough, so I'm going to adjust it by clicking on this corner again. And now it fits within this grouping box. And then I'm going to go over to options, toggle group, and it's going to select all of them for me. And I'm just going to hold down the alt key and click on these because I don't want these to be included in the group. Then we're going to rotate and this time we are, whoa, look at all those. <laughs> we're going to rotate around the center and we're going to change the axis to this one right here. And I want it at a 45 degree angle on the diagonal. So it looks like because I want to swivel it around this way, this is the thick line. So it's going to be a minus 45, minus 45. And look, it's moved it over to the angle. Then let's pull up the grid system and we can figure out where we want to position it by holding down the alt key and just clicking until you get it exactly where you want it. And there you go. And then just click on an object to get rid of the green and you have your perfectly angled arch. Now, in order to decorate this pantry, I used these. I love these. These are from Strangerville, but they also come, they're debug objects from other packs too. But what I like about them is they just have that really weathered look to them. If we rotate it by 90 degrees, see, it goes flat and then you can use it as shelving. So to give it this kind of magical hobbit style pantry, I took this debug ivy to cover up the shelving and then I just cluttered it up with a bunch of fun stuff. Now for the back of the cabinet, it's kind of hard to see here, but just to give it some detail in the back so it didn't look empty and so that you can't see into the corner of the build right here. If we go to the back, you can see I used one of these just to just to cover up this ugly mismatched stuff so that when the walls are collapsed, it doesn't look completely terrible. But I also love to use things like this, like the gates. I mean, if you look in the gates right here, there are some really fun selections of what you can use to decorate your builds. I mean, look how ornate these kind of pieces are. You can use those to decorate the interiors and the exteriors of your builds. And then I used these fences, which are debug from Cottage living just to add some texture to it. And as you can see, without using those objects, you can just see straight through to the back of the wall and it's just not as interesting. Whereas when you place them, look how much more interesting it becomes. And you get a nice contrast between the wood and the pale stone color. Then I rotated this ladder from this debug ladder from Cats and Dogs, just to make it look like you can climb up and get your ingredients. Now this fun part on the bottom, let me just delete some stuff, delete this ivy so you can kind of see how this was constructed. Let's just delete all these pieces. These are just all debug objects and I used these little wooden signs from Snowy Escape sized down to make it look like they're labels for the different types of flowers you can use. This vine is from Jungle Adventure and then I used, I really wanted to use this basket but it's attached to this whole still life decor and I just didn't want the other pieces, I only wanted the basket so I just kind of hid the back parts I didn't want in the back of the shelving and then just had the basket part. Now to create this bottom level here I used these debug from Eco Lifestyle and then this fun part, it's a get together bridge, it's 
usually massive, so I had to size it down uh, with tool mod. But the great thing about this bridge is that most bridges cannot be rotated, but this one can. So I just pulled up tool mod and I clicked on it, shift alt click to duplicate, and then we're going to rotate it by 180 degrees and then lower it. Now it's flickering here. I'm not, I'm not doing it perfectly right now, but you get this really cool look to it. But because it has these kind of white line seams that kind of break up the black, what I then did is I used these debug doors from the new cottage living pack. I used the back of them because they're perfectly black and I just sized them down and put one on one side and then one on the other just to really black it out like so and then it's perfectly black and I just wanted it to be a place for the mushrooms to grow and I used these from the vampire pack and I wanted it to look like I don't know there's just something growing out of here and I used this debug dirt so if you're using Twisted Mexi's better build by mod he organized all the debug objects you can just type in dirt and you'll find it otherwise you kind of have to search for a while through the debug menu and then I just placed a bunch of these mushrooms from Cottage Living at different heights in the soil mound and just filled up that area and then I don't know I just thought it was a fun way to store some of the vegetables and then I used the llama wool debug piles <laughs> from Cottage Living and put them inside of these jungle adventure baskets to make it look like different kinds of flower because even though this is supposed to be hair and the thought of turning hair into food is really grotesque <laughs> it does kind of have that flower texture to it put a bucket on the side with this little debug brush from Cottage Living and then for this um this is debug from Cottage Living as well and I rotated one of these jet water emitters at an angle where it kind of matched up with this faucet over here stacked some debug flower bags anyway what I also love is these beams from eco lifestyle because they match perfectly with this wood fencing so I love to use them as beams and this one is just rotated at a 45 degree angle and a lot of these wooden posts in the debug menu cannot be rotated but this one can so it works perfectly and as you can see I rotated a bunch of them and it kind of created this makeshift rustic looking counter and I just cluttered it up and in order to do that because when you've got the cabinets underneath things are going to lock onto the top so I temporarily move everything away like that to get rid of them and then I place all my clutter on top and then I created this little decorative area to display the breads these are debug breads you have to be careful with these because they don't always show up when you upload them to gallery if you have better build by mod install they will and I think there's this thing like now you can upload it to gallery and if you place it you can place it once but if you try and do it several times eventually these are going to disappear something like that I don't know sorry if that's confusing but same with these debug flower bags I didn't even know these existed in the game but I recently found them and they look so cool so yeah I just cluttered up this area over here and then I just put together a very simple bright vibrant bathroom bathrooms are not really I don't know I, I don't love making bathrooms <laughs> so I just kept it simple it's kind of awkward you have to walk through the bathroom to get upstairs and then upstairs we just have this fun little area where you can study and then for this custom little fireplace this fireplace is not functional because I put these in front of it but I added this base game shelving and if you can see I'm going to delete some of the pieces so you can see what a difference it makes to kind of cover stuff up with added objects like this is the original and it looks really cool but look how much cooler it looks when you just add some extra details to it with the shelving and I use these little cabinets from Jungle Adventure I just sized them down and placed one on top of each other just to hide some of that so you get like the wood detail without it looking like it's an actual shelving unit so in order to make the fire that meant I had to come up with custom fire so what I did was I used the medieval brazier is it is it pronounced brazier makes me think of a bra <laughs> Anyway, so um, I sized a bunch of them down as far as I could without using tool mod and I kind of just um, I elevated some of them with a nine key and just put them where I wanted them. I put a bunch of more than that and then with tool mod I had to lower them because the flames are up here. So with tool mod I selected all of them, lowered them and then resized them to 0 0.001 and it makes them completely disappear. But you have to make sure that they're exactly where you want them before you make them invisible. Otherwise it's going to be impossible to find them again. <laughs> and then to keep it quick we're going to finish on the piece de resistance the cupcake machine this took me three days i think to cover it took me forever with tool mod to take these little um notes and i just used tool mod to rotate it by several different angles until i could shape it around it took forever as these little wooden nails i just used the spoons from realm of magic i'm just going to break this down because there's no way that i can fit in reenacting some of these the ways that i constructed this but i just want you to see what kind of objects i use to create this so if we move the cupcake machine itself we can see that's what it originally looked like and then this is what i did to cover it up now the hard hardest part was actually this rounded drum. I did the same technique I did to create these circles and arches but when you're doing it upright rather than creating the circle on the ground first and then rotating it upright it can become quite tricky so I had to rearrange all the pieces but I created this drum, this wooden drum using these debug planks of wood and these are perfect because the footprint doesn't interfere so you can cover any object with them. Same with these chopping blocks from uh, what pack is this? It's the, it's the one with the ice cream icon I think. I can't remember the ice cream icon one. Anyway whatever pack 
fact that is, <laughs> that's what it's from. And pretty much you can use any wall decoration to cover an object and the footprint isn't going to interfere. Okay, so anyway, so I created this drum with all the wood. I used the Journey to Batu wall decor to create these end caps as well as these from Discover University. I had to lower it with tool mod because it bounces up to this height. And then I wanted to create movement in live mode by the cool thing is, is that these from Cottage Living can actually be resized. They're, it's a water wheel and you can size them down and I used it to cover up this like steam pipe. It's not like, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect way to cover it up, but <laughs> this thing, it just, it didn't look medieval or fantasy enough. And then I used more of these planks of wood from Eco Lifestyle to act as the harness, the caging, not caging, whatever, the structure that holds all these together. It doesn't make sense what these are for, but whatever. And then to hide, to hide this part of it, cause it just looks too modern. I could, I, it took me forever. I could not find a cylindrical object. So I ended up just going with these soul scraps from Paranormal and <laughs> just stacked a ton of them on top of each other. To hide the base of it, I used these little podiums from Cottage Living. They're like where you display your oversized crops and your chickens and all that kind of stuff for the like the competition fair thing. And I just cluttered up all of this area with stacks of ingredients, flour, milk. Let's move all of these out the way so you can see. In order to get a flour texture, I used this debug sand from Island Living. And then these are more wheels from Cottage Living. They're metal ones. I just added them because I don't know. It just looked cool. <laughs> and then I created this little bag of ingredients. This is from Eco Lifestyle. And I just tilted the uh, dirt that I showed you earlier by like 20 degrees each until it created like this rounded curve like it's flowing out into this debug bucket from Cottage Living with some more soil on top just to make it I don't know I just wanted ingredients everywhere pouring out into everything this is kind of a funky <laughs> shape I was trying to cover this um, metal spout I used all of this sand to to make it look like they've poured in a bunch of it with this big shovel this is actually from Eco Lifestyle as well and it's to hide this metal funnel spout and then I couldn't figure out what to use for this curved piece so I just used more of these buckets. Hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. And then I love how vibrant all of these colors are from Cottage Living. These are like all the different colors you can dye your animal's fur. So I think these are the different ingredients to create the treats that can change like your llama and cow color. But it just looked like this could be stuff that you put on top of your cupcakes. Now these cabinet doors were actually made with no CC paintings from the incredible Sadie Sim. She made these for one of her builds and she gave me permission to use them on my objects, which is very generous of her. So huge Huge shout out to her. You should follow her. She makes the most incredible fantasy stuff. And then uh, for the doorknobs, I use these decor pieces from Journey to Batu. If you tilt them on the side and size them down, they make really good doorknobs. And then for this sign, I, uh, I just used these restaurant signs on top of a rotated brush as the plaque. Then these little gear parts from Cottage Living, the upgrade parts. And then this is actually a dog bowl, <laughs> but I just love the wood grain texture. So I turned it upside down. And then more of these these are covering the whole thing. I'm running out of time. This is taking too long, but basically like I use this from Cottage Living. It's a roof decoration, but I just love the wood grain. I use that to just shape around the edge of this because it's such a stark white. It just didn't look right. And then I use curtains in the entrance to like these parts where the cupcakes go in and out. I use curtains and then to fill in all the areas just to make it look more boxy. I use a ton of these crates from Cats and Dogs, as you can see here, just to block everything out and cover everything. And then for these rounded parts of like, you see how it's got this rounded piece I wanted to try and cover it with something so I ended up just stacking these wheels on the side creating this as the base and then using oversized stools just to get the wood texture on the top and then I could not for the life of me figure out what object to use to try and like decorate around the entrances and exits so I just ended up using this industrial base game chair and rotating it on its side uh, I could have just left it the metal right there but I don't know I just think it has more of a medieval fantasy feel with the darker color that ties into the brown of the rest of it and then for this top part I used more of these dog bowls Let's get rid of all the rest of them so you can kind of see what it looks like underneath. And then I used these signs, just oversized them from Snowy Escape. I don't know, just to create something nice to put underneath this metal tubing because it didn't look very medieval. And then I just used this planter, this base game. No, this is um, outdoor retreat planter. And then I tilted a bunch of these scrolls and maps to look like recipes. I wanted it to feel like this medieval recipe, like all the recipes are in scrolls. And can you imagine like if this is the shopping list or the recipe for the cupcakes? <laughs> that would be insane. I rotated this book decor on its side. This is another no CC painting by Sadie. I put this as like, because it has a nice trim, a little plaque right here. And then I put more of these soul scraps and I use this from Paranormal to act as like the button that they press in order to 
turn on the cupcake machine. Another, more of these um, competition stands. And I love these. These are the take your shoes off sign from Snowy Escape. But I just love the wood grain. So they work perfectly as like drawers. So for example, I created these little drawers by using the planters and then putting these at the front of it. So it looks like the drawer front. And then filling it with a bunch of these jars from Outdoor Retreat. And then this from like the baking decorations. I think this is base game. And another shovel and some of these Journey to Batu jars. I tilted some of them so they look like they're like shoved in the drawer. And then I just, I put a back piece on it because this thing is so huge. If it's going to be huge, it might as well look like this big solid piece of furniture. <laughs> so then I, I love this. It's Debug from Jungle Adventure. Oh, I just, if we had more objects like this, like wall beams, they're just so cool without the huge lantern. So because it had this huge lantern, I had to try and hide it. So I love the design of this clock from Cottage Living. And then I just put a barrel there in the center just to hide that. I used the back of this Cottage Living sign here just because it has such a gorgeous shape to use as the top part and then I use more of these signs from Snowy Escape and there you go that's how I constructed this little studio for Deligracy's Studio Cube Challenge I have three more that I am almost done uh, constructing and they're going to have different fantasy professions I'm working on the tours of all your incredible castles and medieval villages and all kinds of things that you did for the Shell Challenge um, I haven't been feeling very well so I've not been very good at making consistent content for this channel but hopefully that will improve soon thank you for watching this I hope you found it helpful and inspirational for your own builds and until the next one guys I freaking love you